Hi, Coach Dave here with the last of our uh, three-part series on how to buy the right uh, hockey equipment. Kind of aimed as a support for uh, early beginning hockey players either in the initiation program or in novice. All initiation players are between the ages of four and six, so we're, they're certainly not looking at a stick like this. They're not looking at a stick like this. They are shopping for a stick in this section. There are a couple of questions that parents are going to have to ask themselves as they decide which one of these sticks they're planning on buying. Those questions are pretty easy to understand if you look down at the blade of these sticks. Perhaps the first question a parent's going to have to ask is whether they want a straight bladed stick that has no curve or a right-handed curve or a left-handed curve. I'll do a little bit more on the right and left-handed curve in a moment. I'm just going to put those aside. There are huge advantages, especially for young players, in using a straight stick because it's way easier for them to move a puck, especially as they practice backhands. The other reality is some, some kids start shooting right and end up shooting left, so you end up in that embarrassing position where you're, you're trying to replace the stick a couple of weeks into practice. So if I could put our straight stick aside and come back to these curves, a right-handed curve and a left-handed curve. We'll get rid of a common misconception, and that is that these curves have nothing to do with, with whether you're right-handed. There are lots of right-handed players who shoot left, lots of left-handed players who shoot right. Uh, I personally shoot left-handed, which means that this would be the stick I would want to use. The next question you need to, to ask an answer is whether you want to have a wood stick or a composite stick. Uh, a typical wood stick is $15 and up. A typical composite stick, which looks pretty similar but is made of different material, would start in the, you know, the $40 range. The other question that a parent has to answer is how long to make their uh, child's stick. I've switched to an adult shaft here. I'm obviously not on skates, but the question is whether a stick should be at eye level, nose level, or chin level when the child is, uh, is on skates. I personally prefer nose level. Uh, there are some coaches that prefer chin, but we're talking about a, a distance like that. And that's something that's pretty easy to adjust because all sticks can be cut off. So I'd prefer that IP players start with their stick up to their nose, not their forehead, not their eyes, up to here while they're on skates. And if we have to cut it down a little, we can, we can do that as, as we become a little more familiar with the way your child skates. The last issue related to sticks is super, super important. I would tell you, watching initiation players, they fall down fairly frequently, especially in, in the first year. And when they do, they have very little idea of where their sticks go. So one of the things that's really critical is when a, when a stick is cut down to fit a child, that we don't leave a situation where a stick could go through another child's cage and, and hit them anywhere in the face, but especially in the eye. So in order to prevent that, what we have to do is to put a, a knob of some kind. And the easiest way is to do it with tape. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. There are a couple of ways to put a knob on a stick. One way is kind of, I call it the goalie way, is that you just go round and round and round, especially if you have shares in the tape company. And as you keep going, you can see this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if we can just keep this going for a little while. And if we were to stop right about there with a knob that looks about like that, what you have to do is to test these. So that's pretty much enough to prevent it from going through a cage. So it, it's not much to do that. Now, personally, <laughs> I always, I've done it my whole life, and funny hockey players are creatures of habit, is that every hockey stick I've ever taped for any player, my sons, <laughs> I do this, I spin this, 
and I simply wrap it around and it's to give them kind of an extra little bit of grip on their upper hand. And then <laughs> it's a matter of making sure that's smooth and then just taping up around and around and back and you end up with something that looks like that so when they grab onto their stick you know they have another area to hold now there's another whole area of the stick and that is the blade of the stick that also has to be taped um, if I could just reach over and grab the Bauer Prodigy stick they even tell you on the stick <laughs> how to tape and where to tape on the blade of the stick. Taping a stick is pretty straightforward. You tape a stick so that the, uh, the stick blade has a little more drag on it and it hangs under the puck just a little better. It makes stick handling a little easier. And I guess the only, only thing you need to know is that it's heel to toe. So again, if you start here, I'm always in awe of the uh, the pros who do this in about five seconds. I take a little bit longer. And you're just putting a single wrap of tape. Uh, over the course of a year, most initiation players would retape their stick probably 10 times. Uh, the pucks do a pretty good job of cutting holes in the tape and dragging their stick in the ice wears out the tape. And again, you're looking at something about like that. And again, that gives you an edge here where the puck will hang on to. Different players will believe you know, how far along it became cool to do it to the whole end. Individual players will decide how far along to do it. But basically, that's taping a stick 101. Hope that helps. We have a bunch more uh, videos in our series. Uh, click on the links, and hopefully uh, this helps.